This episode of Weekly Weird News is sponsored by HelloFresh. Of all the people to come out of the Donald Trump administration and the more general Trumpification of the Republican Party, no one has come out with less of his reputation intact than Rudolph Giuliani. It may be hard to believe now, especially if you're younger, but 20 years ago, Rudy Giuliani was the most high-profile and respected local politician in America. Mm -hmm. He was America's mayor. And a lot of people's first pick for who was going to replace George W. Bush as president in 2008 until old Bungler came around and <laughs> messed it all up. And this was due not only to Giuliani being the mayor who led New York City out of the horrors of 9-11, but also for cleaning up New York and transforming it from the poor and crime-ridden cesspool of the 70s and 80s back into a safe and bustling metropolis. It's just a giant paintbrush and painting over a porn theater and turning it into an M&M store. That's right, baby. Yeah. And you can still get heart. They've got the green M&M right there. Yeah. You know that place where we used to watch all the cool porno movies? That's now the world's largest Toys R Us. Hell yeah. Um, but yeah, nine, the 9-11 thing was really it just ha that he happened to be mayor <laughs> yeah, at the time. He and, did it. And in fact, he'd actually made decisions that may have directly led to the deaths of firefighters. And Giuliani's cleanup of New York also came at the expense of having the NYPD constantly harass poor and minority New Yorkers. But for the casual observer, he was America's mayor. And to be fair, he also gets a lot of credit for dismantling the mafia's stranglehold over New York City as a federal prosecutor prior to to being mayor, and that seems to be mostly accurate. But basically, Rudy Giuliani had multiple opportunities to step away from the limelight and leave behind a legacy of success. But instead, he hitched his wagon to, do to Donald Trump, and he it just absolutely debased himself every step of the way. Just Rudy Giuliani, 10-year speed run, dismantle my legacy challenge. Quite the own goal. Now, the pinnacle of this debasement, the moment that Rudy's legacy was truly undone, was probably the Four Seasons Total Landscaping press conference where he desperately pushed the stolen election hoax. Uh, but there's also the other press conference where his face appeared to leak some sort of strange alien brown fluid. Uh, there's his entire appearance in Borat 2. And there's the fact that apparently he was shit-faced constantly for at least the 2020 election season and mm -hmm. probably more. Uh, there's many more examples of this man completely embarrassing himself. And for what? For Donald Trump, the man doesn't even like you, Rudy. You did all this shit for him, and he refused to even pay you. Yeah. And now, thanks to yet another book about the Trump administration, we, we have a new example of just how little Donald Trump actually respected Rudy Giuliani. Here's the Daily Beast. Donald Trump thinks Rudy Giuliani's shit stinks. Literally. According to New York Times reporter Maggie Haberman's new book, in Confidence Man, The Making of Donald Trump and the Breaking of America, Haberman writes that there were shifting loyalty levels among Trump aides after the 2016 campaign, whether the storm stemming from the vulgar, unearthed remarks made by Trump on the Access Hollywood tape. Quote, the moment created a new hierarchy of loyalties among Trump intimates. Chris Christie, as the counterattack came together, made himself unavailable for the rest of the weekend. While Rudy Giuliani volunteered to represent the campaign on the Sunday talk shows, Haberman wrote, Yet, that didn't leave Giuliani resistant to Trump tossing insults his way. While aboard one of the former president's planes with Giuliani, Trump made it a point to loudly complain about the odor after Giuliani had used one of the plane's bathrooms so that other aides could hear. Rudy, that's fucking disgusting, Trump yelled. <laughs> uh, a Trump spokesperson didn't return the Daily Beast's request for comment on Tuesday afternoon. The Daily Beast couldn't reach Giuliani. Rudy, my God. Oh. So I was like a sewer in here. Uh, if only we could light a match, but you'd take all of us down. <laughs> yeah, and it's, it's really not surprising at all that Rudy Giuliani takes stinky dumps. I don't know. He just seems like the kind of guy that would. I'll I can't explain it, but that man's shit smells terrible. Just the diets surrounding these men yeah. would, would very easily lead you to believe that their uh, excrement tastes Not a lot taste. of... <laughs> smells terrible. I mean, yeah, that goes without saying. Yeah, 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 yeah. not a lot of vegetables... Um, yeah. Yeah. He's got stinky poops. I believe it. I believe it too. But when you're a public figure in your mid-70s getting loudly mocked for your stinky dumps by another guy in his mid-70s who happens to be the president of the United States, that's rough. You almost got to feel bad for the guy. I don't know. It's just a buddy comedy thing. Uh, they did that it's whole... Just a thing I, it's a thing we do. I insult him constantly and he takes it. It's it's our dynamic. Their relationship has been sealed ever since that uh, like drag queen video. Yeah. Yeah. Like after that, it's like they're inseparable. It's, they are. Yeah. Peas in a pod. Mm -hmm. And yeah, knowing Trump, this absolutely was not a one-time thing. Stinky Rudy or some other nickname 
had to be on heavy rotation for a while. And he just took it. He not only took it, he went to bat for Trump every night on the news, pushing a conspiracy theory that ended up getting him sued for everything he's worth by a voting machine's manufacturer. Hard to imagine a more cucked existence. Well, he's right, after all. My poops do stink. He's right. I should work on that. <laughs> I'm sorry, Mr. President. Mm -hmm. But anyway, that Maggie Haberman book apparently has tons of other tidbits that people are rightfully mad at her for not publishing at the time and instead saving them for her book. But a lot of it's just real funny stuff. Yeah, it's a lot of goofy stuff. It's also just like, what what could you possibly withhold yeah. from the public that... Uh, None of this would, would have changed the course of history, yeah, I'll say that. Yeah, that's for sure. Because they tried to get Trump on a lot of actually very serious uh, yeah. things and uh, didn't work. It's not a secret that this guy uh, was, you know, up to all manner of uh, terrible, unethical things. Yeah, they're not going to no. open another uh, impeachment inquiry because he, like, the content know, took a big of, dump or something. The content of one of the, like, two dozen Trump administration memoirs or whatever is not going to move the needle all that much. Yeah. And some of these things are, you know, it's stuff that we've heard about previously, but have been further described in the book. There's the fact that Trump would frequently tear up documents and try to flush the pieces down the toilet. There's Trump's idea when he had COVID that he wanted to be seen coming out of the hospital in a wheelchair looking weak before dramatically standing up, ripping open his shirt and revealing a Superman logo underneath. I wish he'd done that. That would have been so cool. Uh, he apparently even had aides try shopping for a Superman shirt. Uh, then there's the fact that Trump told various White House aides that his last ditch Hail Mary plan to not give up the presidency was to simply refuse to leave the building. Um, but there, there's other stuff, like this excerpt from The Atlantic. Can you believe these are my customers? Donald Trump once asked while surveying the crowd in the Taj Mahal Casino's poker room. Look at these losers, he said to his consultant, Tom O'Neill, of people spending money on the floor of the Trump Plaza Casino. Visiting the Iowa State Fair as a presidential candidate in 2015, he was astounded that locals fell in line to support him because of a few free rides in his branded helicopter. In the White House, he was sometimes stunned at his own backers' fervor, telling aides, they're fucking crazy. <laughs> Yet they loved him and wanted to own a piece of him. And that was what mattered most. Uh, and the Atlantic excerpts also include a great line from Trump while being interviewed by Haberman in Mar-a-Lago while it was closed due to a COVID scare. He said, COVID, turns out, not good. <laughs> not good. Not good. Trump also, of course, talked mad shit on everyone around him, not just Rudy. Regarding Mitch McConnell, the old crow's a piece of shit. Uh, regarding Chris Christie, I was compared to him? Why? I didn't know I had that big of a weight problem. <laughs> da, 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 da. That's a zinger, man. Uh, regarding German Chancellor Angela Merkel, that bitch. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Uh, he also once joked that if his son-in-law, Jared Kushner, ever went camping, his skinny ass might get uh, raped deliverance style. Okay. You gotta get raped, Jared. Uh, uh, he also openly talked about wishing his daughter Ivanka had married Tom Brady instead of Jared. And at one point was just a tap away from firing both Jared and Ivanka from the White House. Here's what's interesting. Tom Brady back on the market, reportedly. Uh, yeah. yeah. So I've seen um, those reports. Yes. Uh, him and Ivanka maybe striking up a little romance on the side. We, we don't know What's yet. What's Jared going to do about it? He's going to be sitting in the cuck chair. What could Jared do? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Trump, as vulgar as he is, he has a point. Mm -hmm. Can you really, can anyone picture Jared Kushner camping? No. Well. I can't. In like a really nice RV. Yeah. Never, never, leaving, never leaving the leaving. RV. Yeah. 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 Uh, but like, I'm talking real camping. No. No, you can't. You mm -hmm. can't because it's absurd. Yes. And he, something bad probably would happen to him. Yes, he would God forbid, but it would. by a bear or something. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, when asked if he keeps in contact with any other world leaders, uh, Trump alluded to somehow still being in direct contact with Kim Jong-un, which is pretty fucking wild if true. I it's, mean, like... It's probably a number that someone's operating. Yeah, there's a number of ways this could be, but assuming he is actually talking to Kim Jong-un, there would have to be some weird back channel. And what are they going to talk about? There's obviously a huge language barrier there. I mean, anything. You know, he I likes guess. they uh, would just massage each other's egos. That's all yeah, it's really about for either of them. Yeah. But uh, yeah, there's also a story about Trump being visited by a uniformed official from the military branch of the U.S. Public Health Service, um, presumably to talk about public health stuff. And uh, Trump asking that guy to organize bombing raids on cartel drug labs in Mexico. <laughs> and rather than correct Trump, uh, White House aides just asked that guy to maybe not wear his military uniform around Trump because it's like confusing him. He's, yeah. got the, he's got the troops guys, and he's got the healthcare guys. You work for me, go bomb someone. 
why aren't you bombing the cartels like we asked? Yeah. Sir, I'm just trying to figure out how to get these vaccine doses to uh, our troops. Oh, you're overseas. a nerd. Ew. Ew. <laughs> get away. Uh, there's you also, need to hang out with my son-in-law. Yeah, you guys can, uh, you know, build a... Talk about numbers or whatever. Legos boring or some shit. dumb shit. Yeah. yeah. But my, my son, Baron, he's a, he's a nerd too, but he's a good nerd. Yeah. He gets on the computer. You wouldn't believe the things Eight he does. Eight feet tall. This boy keeps growing. He shut down Kiev. <laughs> uh, there's also several accounts of Trump being uh, extremely homophobic and transphobic, if you can believe it. I know. Mm -hmm. I'm shocked. Uh, here's the Daily Beast. According to an excerpt obtained by the Daily Beast, a week before the second debate unfolded in St. Louis in 2016, Trump's close advisor at the time, Rance Priebus, presented the aspiring political figure with a question on same-sex bathrooms. In playing the role of a female transgender student, Priebus asked Trump whether this hypothetical student could still use the girl's bathroom. Without missing a beat, Trump said he had a question. Cocked or decocked, Trump asked. Jesus Jeez Christ. Uh, offering up a blank stare, the group was taken aback. Decocked, an unspecified individual in the room responded. Trump then began making a chopping <laughs> gesture. Uh, with cock or without cock, he said. At that moment, his advisors sitting within Trump Tower had come to understand that Trump wanted to know if the imaginary student had transitioned and undergone bottom surgery. Quote, what difference does that make? An advisor in the room responded to Trump. The now former president shot back that such a determination would impact his answer. Quote, what if a girl was in the bathroom and someone came in, lifted up a skirt, and a schlong was hanging out? Trump continued, according to Haberman's book, Confidence Man, The Making of Donald Trump and Breaking of America. Slong. Yeah, I can hear that. The way that he describes it, you can tell that there is a full visual movie playing in his head mm -hmm. of like giant wieners being flopped around and chopped with butcher knives. Yeah. Yeah. And he's loving it. Cocked and decocked. Which is it? No cock, no problem. But if it's cocked, I, I don't know. Because that's what people do. They walk in and they just whip. Woo! There it is. Yeah. We've all been in the women's <laughs> room. It's a, it's a circus in there. It's mm -hmm. a zoo. Yep. Uh, also from the article, Trump also tended to bully those who were gay not to their faces. Instead, behind closed doors. In particular, former Trump Organization executive Alan Marcus said Trump would belittle another executive that Trump believed was gay as a queer and bragged that he paid the executive less. <laughs> He's gay and that's why I pay him less. But pay him, I pay him as much as the women. That's probably where his mind went. Yeah. yeah. You want to be a woman? I don't know what it I'll is. I'll pay you like a woman. I'm Trump in the 80s, and but that's... I've just been exposed to the concept of I would of not be surprised at all if that was the actual reasoning behind it. Mm, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Trump also uh, frequently used homophobic slurs and in the 80s, at the peak of the AIDS crisis, would call up reporters to find out if anyone that he'd met and shook hands with was gay. He's, uh, he's our uh, Princess Diana. Any of the people you see me Except talk to. Except the exact think? opposite. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, this fixation on figuring out who's gay apparently continued into the present day. Uh, in the early days of the administration, during a meet with then-Vice President Mike Pence and ex-communications campaign boss Jason Miller, Trump deemed that the latter likes the ladies. Trump, according to the book, further said of Miller, You know how sometimes someone turns out to be gay later and you knew? This guy, he isn't even like 1% gay. <laughs> Which means he's 110%. This man is the straightest straight man ever. I mean, I like that. He's like me. 100% straight. <laughs> You know, people say a lot of bad things about me, a lot of bad things, a lot of good things, but uh, no one has ever questioned my gaydar. I'm at the very edge of the Kinsey scale. It's, <laughs> it's, a, it's a, the, a the edge of a cliff past me. No one gets further. People always, they comment, say what you will about Trump. He is dead to rights when he, uh, when he names a gay person. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He's not only the world's straightest man, but he has gaydar like crazy. Yes. Which uh, is a crazy combination. <laughs> It is. Uh, there's also a story in there about Trump being at some fancy dinner in the 80s. And when the topic of Brazilian women came up, Trump remarked, they have so much pussy hair. <laughs> Exotic. <laughs> Don't mind if I do. <laughs> Just sitting at a you know, $10,000 plate uh, event yeah. with the, the, the New York aristocracy. And, and this guy's talking about Brazilian pubes. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, just a real character, that Trump. Uh, and it's incredible that two years out from him leaving office, we're still getting so much juicy Trump content. And uh, we're in a real weird period right now where we're like kind of in the valley between the peaks of potential uh, absurdity yeah. that I hope doesn't happen. But uh, 
What a country. So, yeah, imagine all the new content that we'll get when Trump is president again. Because um, he doesn't age. He's got a base that's still growing. And uh, the Republican Party... healthy as a horse. Healthy as a horse. And the Republican Party, uh, despite uh, like disavowing multiple things about him at various stages through his actual presidency and after, seems to have like absolutely zero memory by choice. They're giving the people what they want. And yes. the people are fucking idiots. <laughs> Feed them the slop. Yep. Americans want slop. Uh, well, I don't know if we've had enough. Maybe. <laughs> I'd prefer not to go yeah, through all this again. Mm -hmm. My hope is that uh, Trump and DeSantis devour each other. Mm -hmm. They do all the work themselves. Man, I don't know what the lasting effect is going to be, but that photo of Ron DeSantis it's next to the Joe Virgin Biden. Ron DeSantis and the it, Chad Joe Biden. It couldn't have been a more perfect. It's an amazing photo. It is. And like, and he's, first of all, his fit is Dumb. Yeah, he looks stupid. The man needs a tailor. He, he was getting just just pummeled online for that look anyway. Yeah. Saying people like people saying he looks like that the bad guy character from Pee Wee Herman. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> shit like that. But then to be in that fit and have that photo taken, that's when you're someone who is like uh, a Ron DeSantis or a Trump. Those are the things that actually affect you. I don't know. Does it really affect anything? Does anything affect anything? I don't fucking know. Trump hates be being seen as weak. It's like a known thing. And he apparently... That's why he wanted to do the wheelchair Superman thing. And he apparently hates Ron DeSantis, uh, which we've covered before, but this book goes into it further. I can't he's, believe he's not... He's, like, he's, not, he's stealing uh, my shit. Yeah, I'm, I'm sh uh, it's crazy that he's not going harder on he's it. He's saving it. Yeah. He wants to do it on stage with Ron DeSantis. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, yeah. And I kind of want that too. <laughs> oh, monkey's paw shit. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but speaking of the U.S. government, Trump's most lasting legacy is, of course, on the Supreme Court, which has three Trump appointees who will probably be there for a very long time, maybe longer than this country remains existent. Yeah. And one case they might take up soon is Novak v. Parma, a case revolving around an Ohio man named Anthony Novak, who created a parody Facebook page of his local police department in the city of Parma, which to the casual observer might have looked legit, but which featured posts which only an idiot would believe. Examples include a post about criminalizing, giving homeless people food, money, or shelter in an effort to make the homeless leave Parma due to starvation, a post announcing that the police department is hiring but is strongly encouraging minorities not to apply, and a post advertising a pedophile reform event where completing a set of challenges would get your name removed from the sex offender registry. Oh, I mean, my ridiculous, but believable, especially the first one, because that has actually happened. I remember what happened in Orlando. Yeah, that is like, I mean, th that is the official policy in a lot of places, sort of. Uh, they just don't, they usually don't spell it out like that. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, anyways, this fooled enough people that it caught the attention of the actual police department and the local news. And Novak decided to take down the page. So end of story, right? Nope. The Parma police served Facebook with a warrant to find the page creator's identity, then arrested Novak and charged him with a felony for using a computer to disrupt public services. They also searched his home and confiscated basically anything that connect, can connect to the internet, which like these days, Xbox. <laughs> yeah, these days, pretty much anything. Yeah. Uh, when the case went to trial, Novak was found not guilty because, duh. But then he then said about suing the cops for all the trouble that they'd put him through over literally nothing. And that case was eventually dismissed due to qualified immunity, which is the legal concept in the U.S. that basically says cops can't be held personally responsible for civil rights violations. Did I do that? Legally, no. So that's where the Supreme Court comes in. Uh, Novak and the Institute for Justice are trying to appeal the case all the way up to the nation's highest court with the potential to finally overturn the concept of qualified immunity once and for all. Uh, whether the case gets picked up is anyone's guess. But recently, the folks at The Onion stepped in and sent the U.S. Supreme Court an amicus curiae, which is basically an unsolicited expert opinion on a case from someone with a personal interest in the case's outcome. Uh, the Onion is, after all, the pinnacle of parody in this country, and they were even directly referenced by judges at various points in this case as an example of parody that's protected under the First Amendment. So The Onion is basically telling the Supreme Court that, in their expert opinion, the idea that cops can harass and prosecute someone for doing jokes is ridiculous. But since this is The Onion, the amicus brief itself is also a work of parody. Mm -hmm. uh, here's the introduction. The Onion is the world's leading news publication, offering highly acclaimed, universally revered coverage of breaking national, international, and local news events. 
Rising from its humble beginnings as a print newspaper in 1756, The Onion now enjoys a daily readership of 4.3 trillion and has grown into the single most powerful and influential organization in human history. In addition to maintaining a towering standard of excellence to which the rest of the industry aspires, The Onion supports more than 350,000 full and part-time journalism jobs in its numerous news bureaus and manual labor camps stationed around the world. And members of its editorial board have served with distinction in advisory capacity for such nations as China, Syria, Somalia, and the former Soviet Union. On top of its journalistic pursuits, The Onion also owns and operates the majority of the world's transoceanic shipping lanes, stands on the nation's leading edge on matters of deforestation and strip mining, and proudly conducts tests on millions of animals daily. We're a fun company. Yeah, so they get, they get a bit more serious once they get to the matter at hand, though, and their argument to the court is broken down into four parts. Parody functions by tricking people into thinking that it is real. Because parody mimics the real thing, it has the unique capacity to critique the real thing. A reasonable reader does not need a disclaimer to know that parody is parody. And it should be obvious that parodists cannot be prosecuted for telling a joke with a straight face. They break down these arguments with a lot of humor, though, and it's a brilliant blend of uh, very well-sourced legal arguments and comedy. Mm -hmm. In a way, is literally The Onion explaining in depth why The Onion is funny and explaining the concept of parody more in depth than perhaps anyone has ever done so before. So the whole thing is very meta on multiple levels. Yeah, and, and it's now in the national record. <laughs> it is, and the full 18-page document is definitely worth a read. We'll leave a link to the uh, uh, to that document in the video description. But one of the funniest parts is when they reference The Onion's motto to Stoltus S, which translates to "You are dumb." And they say that they're including that not only because it's central to their argument, but also because the federal judiciary is staffed entirely by total Latin dorks. Uh, <laughs> the document, it's also great for refreshing your memory on all the times high profile figures fell for an Onion article, like the time a Republican congressman saw the headline, Planned Parenthood opens $8 billion abortion plex and shared it to his Facebook followers, or the time Chinese media picked up on the news that Kim Jong-un had been voted sexiest man alive. It's also a great reference on the long history of parody going back thousands of years and should honestly be a key text, not only for First Amendment lawyers, but also for anyone interested in comedy and maybe taught in history class in high school. Yeah. And like real lawyers, uh, they can reference it easily. And they have like a yeah. lot of real lawyers have been like, this is a, an excellent document. This is this should be cited. Yes. And it's also just really funny. And hopefully leads to a change in the way that things are operated here. One would hope. Hmm. Anyway, we've got the headlines after the show coming right up. But first, this episode is sponsored by HelloFresh. With HelloFresh, you get farm fresh pre-portioned ingredients and seasonal recipes delivered right to your doorstep. Skip trips to the grocery store and count on HelloFresh to make home cooking easy, fun, and affordable. That's why it's America's number one meal kit. With HelloFresh, ingredients travel from the farm to your doorstep in less than seven days, so you know they are fresh. Plus, pre-portioned ingredients make cooking a snap and cut down on food waste. Have your pumpkin spice and eat it too with a rotating selection of fall-inspired items from HelloFresh Market. From brunch kits to a fall dessert board, you'll find everything you need for all your favorite autumn occasions like tailgating, Oktoberfest, and more. Uh, we're big fans of the quick 20-minute one-pan recipes that HelloFresh offers. Uh, next week's menu has the one-pan Santa Fe pork tacos with Monterey Jack and cilantro lime slaw, which is also available with chicken or shrimp, and the one-pan cheesy beef tortilla melt. Not only do these look delicious, but uh, doing the dishes afterwards is going to be a total breeze. Yeah, I just did the uh, uh, like a pork bulgogi bowl. Super easy to do, mm -hmm. very quick. Easy to clean up and delicious. Yeah. Awesome. So go to HelloFresh.com slash WeeklyWeird65 and use code WeeklyWeird65 for 65% off plus free shipping. Again, that is code WeeklyWeird65 at HelloFresh.com slash WeeklyWeird65 for 65% off plus free shipping. Links, again, down in the description below. Now for the best headlines of the week, mm -hmm. uh, starting with one that is uh, just the latest in what, what seems to be a trend. It's like The Godfather, Irish Dancing World, hit by cheating allegations. Just all the sports of ESPN6 are uh, just being torn apart some, by these allegations. Some like uh, New World Order-esque sports governing body is really starting to crack down. Like once the, once the, you know, claim was made that someone was cheating using something internally, the jig was up. And that is also the funniest tweet that I saw about the Irish dancing cheating scandal. The jig is up. Yes. <laughs> 
So, uh, well, yeah, yeah, you got chess, uh, fishing. fishing, now Irish dance, which is poker. like... Poker. Oh, yeah, poker. Yeah, I, I still don't understand what was going on there, but the, yeah. It, that is really confusing because there was claims of cheating and she refunded the pot, which would, you would assume... Uh, indicate guilt but she claims that she just did it because she didn't want to deal with like the uh yeah know, the hubbub and is more than happy that, to that like clip is really like the answers are like does she think the cards are not what they are like there's just no reason for her some to play people that do way. dumb shit in poker yeah that's like that's also the thing these are not actual like professionals i think these are like pro-ams or yeah something, i mean right? yeah poker is uh, a game that uh lying and pretending is a big part of it. So. I've certainly had people be like, why the hell did you play that after yeah, beating like, them? Well, I was hoping I'd scare you and you'd run away. Yeah. But it turns out you had it. Yeah. But uh, yeah, this Irish dancing, uh, it's like, and they say it's like the, the mafia and like kind of does sound like that's the case. Mm -hmm. The whole world of Irish dance is very interconnected and insular. Yeah. And there's uh, uh, basically you do a, you know, the judge does a favor for you. You're kind of indebted to them for forever, and mm. uh, I guess people were exchanging sexual favors mm -hmm. for better scores from the judges. It's uh, this is the worst thing that's ever happened to Ireland. I'll tell you that much. Absolutely, that's it ever. Mm -hmm. Let's move on though, because San Francisco now has a fine dining restaurant for dogs with a seventy-five dollar tasting menu. Come on, you wouldn't treat your for seventy-five dollars. Your little pups, your little pups. fucking not. Yeah, Look, I, I do cook for my dogs mm -hmm. because it's, you know, it's healthier than dog food. I make a very simple mix of like turkey, rice and frozen vegetables. And they they seem to like it more than the kibble. But the idea of taking my dog to a, a restaurant and having them sit in the in the, okay, well, no, here's my the question. table. No. Does the human you. get a menu tasting menu with that price? No, it's just for dogs. And there's like desserts. It's It's absurd. And in San Francisco, of all places, a city that is the most dystopian city in America, a place where you are either a millionaire or yeah, you are yes. like a homeless person with leprosy, mm -hmm. like essentially a zombie. It is. It's kind of it's obscene to have a, a dog restaurant in San yeah. Francisco, if you ask me. It's obscene. <laughs> it's wrong. It's a, we are. This is like just the next step of societal decay. Everything anyone ever said about San Francisco is correct. I mean, I'm just saying that because we live in LA and it's a, a an ongoing rivalry. Oh, I, I love well, not as every time I go back to San Francisco, I like it less, which is sad because it is it still has cool aspects to it, but it's like no one. You're turning into a boomer so fast. Well, everyone I used to know who lived in San Francisco got priced out. Yeah, so I have no true. reason to really visit the city anymore. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, everything cool just keeps getting replaced by, like, uh, fucking WeWork and shit. It's like... I haven't been in a while, so maybe I, the I don't rich, know. The, the tech bros all moved. They coalesced on San Francisco because it's a cool city. And they've, step-by-step, uh, step, just dismantled everything cool about it. And then moved, like, out of it uh, in some cases. So... Yeah, it's, it's disappointing. And mm -hmm. it's... it's uh, very geographically locked in. It's not a big city, so there's no expansion. So like, just anyone who's not extremely rich, anyone not making like two hundred thousand dollars a year, just gets pushed out into the Greater Bay Area. Yeah. And even it's even like like Oakland. People were terrified of Oakland ten years ago, and even even Oakland's getting like yeah, just gentrified yeah. to hell and back. So uh, yeah, I will not be taking my dog. Yeah, fuck San Francisco dog restaurant. Hey, how's your how's uh, how's the San Francisco Giants doing in the MLB right now? Oh, sorry, they didn't make the postseason. That too. Yeah. So yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Take that. Corns. Jonathan Davis launches Freak on a Leash pet products line. It's weird that it took this long. It is weird. It took more than twenty years. And I'm also. Oh shit! I'm Jonathan Davis of the band Corn. I love dogs. And one of my top songs is Freak on a Leash. Hold on, I could be talking about a dog when I say that word. When I say Freak on a Leash. That could be referring to a dog. Or fetish gear. Yeah, I think, I don't know. I mean, I guess it could be used. For yeah, words. yeah, he could have gotten into fetish gear too, but this is more wholesome, more broad appeal. I like it. I hope he, he hasn't announced the product line yet, and I'm very curious. He's only announced that he's going to announce it. I hope the he makes a little mic stand for the dogs, like the mic stand he uses with the like yeah the, the very chrome, elaborate uh, the chrome yeah. like it looks tits. like an HR Giger kind of uh, yeah. design. I hope there's something like that. Yeah, that would be for cool. A dog. Mm -hmm. Um, 
Other than that, I don't know. It could really, it could go either way. Look, it's a fun, it's a fun item. Yeah. Millennials I'm want excited. products that they... Millennials love corn. They, they love things from their youth. And they're like, you know what would be cool? A corn. Yeah. Freak on a leash. Leash for my dog. McDonald's adult Happy Meal? Uh, no. Wait, what's that? Jonathan Davis is releasing <laughs> corn-themed dog toys? Oh my gosh. I, I'm, I'm not, uh, you know, uh, projecting enough around me constantly that I love new metal. So specifically on doc, on walks with my dog, I want to be able to let people know that they are safe. Letting me know that they also like corn slipknot system of a down, uh, mud vein and, uh, Limp I feel Biscuit. like corn gets maybe unfairly lumped in with the, they rest are of absolutely them. a new metal band. I mean, they are, but I feel like corn, I mean, I don't even love corn, but I feel like corn is good in a way that a lot of those other bands absolutely were not. We'll talk about this. You've seen the footage of corn at Woodstock 99. I'm like, shit, I would fucking kill to be there. That looks fun as hell. Corn is fantastic. I've seen them live multiple times, but so is I'll put Limp Bizkit to the side. But uh, System of a Down, Slipknot. System of a Down, annoying. Slipknot. Ugh. Ugh. Well, okay, Slipknot's okay, actually. Okay. I got them mixed up with someone else. I thought you were saying Mudvayne. Uh, I, I've said it before. I'll say it again. If you uh, mentally pull down um, Fred Durst's vocals and just listen to the music uh, of no, Limp Bizkit, ha- fantastic. They have some great instruments. Significant other, $3 yeah. bill, y'all. Wonderful instrumental. Yeah, no, I agree. I agree. I, I mean, it's not, it's not, none of this is shit I ever listen to at my leisure, mm-hmm. but I, you know, credit where it's due. I think that people, as time goes on, have just come to, uh, you know, it was not cool to like corn and stuff like that back then, but the music's good. So now people are returning to it and being like, you know what? That's pretty great. And he's an animal lover. Got to respect that. Uh-huh. You know who else is an animal lover? Billy Corgan. They're coming out with a new album. Yeah. Hey. What I've heard so far is really, 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 really bad. They're doing that thing where they like <laughs> hitch it to a far more successful album. They're like, this is yeah. the sequel to that. Yeah. This is the sequel to Melancholy. I'm like, okay, okay, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> Yeah, I saw a clip of it. I think it was posted on the Catatonic Youth Instagram, which is an Instagram solely dedicated to terrible music performances. And so I was like, damn, this is... Whew. That's not good. But he loves dogs. He was on the cover of uh, my old dog. We adopted him from a... No Re- LA or... No, it was a rescue. I guess they're based in Chicago, but they had an adoption out here or something. Mm. Anyway, they sent us like a catalog or a little magazine like once a year and... He was on the cover of it with his dogs and his wife, at, like just looking completely normal, like just a family photo of uh, Smashing Pumpkins Billy Corgan, just with his family and his his lovely, well lit home with his. I think it's awesome. Have you ever seen uh, any of like the photos or stories about Corpse Grinder? No. The the guy from uh, Cannibal Corpse. He is like the most wholesome father. See the guy that like burned down his neighbor's house. He's the guy that goes to like any Walmart or whatever that has a uh, claw machine, oh. and he's so good at claw machine that he just cleans it out and then gives all the toys to kids that are around. Okay. Oh, he's the guitarist from Cannibal Corpse that uh, tried to oh, kill the, his Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So there you go. Yeah. But uh, very wholesome account if you follow him on on Instagram. Very uh, a lot of the uh, scariest people are uh, in some cases extremely nice. Yeah. In others, they do uh, live up to those previous expectations, and that mm. is very weird. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But let's move on. Man takes rescue camel to In-N-Out drive-thru in Las Vegas for fries. I feel like the fact that he did it for fries is the most uh, bizarre al- element of this. Who the hell goes to In-N-Out for fries? The only I, th- I like their fries, but I people look at me like I'm insane when I say that. Well, it's because they're used to just eating a stick of salt. Yeah. That's been processed. In and out, in and like, out fries. They're unless you ask for them well done. They're they're kind of droopy. They're I don't know what you'd call them. They're, they're also fresh. Yeah, they're so fresh. It's, it's different tasting. Um, they taste like potatoes, and that's mm-hmm. why I like them. Um, but a lot of people don't like them. So the fact that this guy uh, took his camel out of the barn to head down to the local Las Vegas In and Out just for fries, bit odd. Yeah. But also, I bet that camel loves it there. Of all the places, of all probably. the places to take a camel, it's like. Las Vegas. First of all, why did you build a city here? This is insane. But it reminds me of my life back in Dubai. Hey, a pyramid. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wow. Wow. It's just like home. Uh, I just hope that he did it on a Wednesday and did the, uh, you know what day it is? 
when he pulled up to the window? What? Hump day! Is that a TikTok? Hump day! Is that a TikTok? I'm not even going to tell you where it's from. You don't deserve to know. Uh-huh. You're not a part of this, this zeitgeist over the past 20 years or so. You don't want to watch TV? Uh-huh. You can continue not knowing where it's from. I- I'll, I'm fine with that. Okay. <laughs> also, they serve this guy. And like, that's always, you're like, oh, you gotta be in a car. But like, oh, you show up with a camel and now suddenly it's totally fine. Well, as a biblical but establishment. With, but when I'm nearly blackout drunk and walk down to the local fast food place and stand between two cars in the checkout line, you tell me, oh, our insurance, uh, we can't serve you. Come on. It's because. You tell me all I needed was my own camel. In and Out is a religious company and the camel is biblical. It is. Wouldn't have had no Jesus without no camel. That's right. Amazon worker delivers to 172 people during Hurricane Ian. I hate y'all. <laughs> Let's just watch this TikTok. Mm-hmm. I hate all of y'all right now. Y'all knew this hurricane was coming and you still order shit? I gotta go to 172 of y'all today. Ooh, I hate y'all. I hate y'all. My everything is wet. Everything is wet. Everything. Yeah, he's uh, he's pretty rightfully mad. Mm-hmm. Uh, why did you order all that shit, knowing that a hurricane was coming? You had like a week and a half, and uh, knowing that a they hurricane do, they was heading right there, fast but slow. Uh, you knew, you knew the time frame, and you were like, you know what? Let me get one of those uh, one of those USB uh, fucking bullshits. Yeah, let me. Uh, Boop. You know the the yes, hurricane. Yes, I would in, like uh, same day delivery. It's traveling. You know the 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 winds are fast, but it's traveling at like you know 20, 30 miles an hour. You could just leave and go to the store, and you would beat the hurricane. Come back here, and but no, no, we have to order and have a guy deliver it all. So, uh, same with uh, there was like a greeting card company that was like no days off. Uh, yeah, that one. They so they were based in Tampa, and uh, yeah. Everyone was trying to evacuate because it was it was looking. It didn't end up being that way, but it was looking like Tampa was going to get harder than it had been hit in like hundreds of years. And better safe than sorry. So yeah, everyone's like, no, I'm leaving because better safe than sorry. And the boss was like, nah, there are the weather people. They're always lying. You just bring your family, your pets, whoever. We're all. It, it'll be a fun weekend here in the office. It, we're, you're you're going to be more safe here than you're going to be anywhere else. I'll you tell you that. Might actually uh, become inspired and come up with a new greeting card. Yeah, come on. We've been we've been. Coasting on the same old shit for too long. Someone's we gonna open like a uh, like a five year old's birthday card and it's gonna say, "I fucking hate my life inside." <laughs> I don't think they're personally writing uh, individual birthday cards. No, oh, you just get into the system. Yeah, you know the system. Fuck you, kid. <laughs> the, the greeting card system. Yeah. New law allows Californians to legally jaywalk. <laughs> <laughs> old Town Pasadena in shambles. Yeah. Oof. Yeah. So it's it's you can't just legally also. First of all, I've never seen any of the millions of jaywalkers I see every week have anything done to them because L.A. cops are the laziest people on the face of the earth. Old Town Pasadena, I've seen it all day long. Well, they're going to have to change their ways now. Yeah. But you also, you can't, you can't just walk into traffic. Like, if there's a reasonable, if there's no cars, you're allowed to jaywalk. Yeah. But you know, like, immediately people are going to be like, oh, I thought jaywalking was legal. Gavin Newsom said it was legal. It's like. No. No. Gotta well, read the fine print. If we wait long enough, we'll see someone test this new law out, and we'll see how it goes. Yeah, I mean, I'll just continue doing what I was already doing, which is jaywalking when it's safe. Whenever whenever I damn well please. Yeah. Yeah. January 6th defendants held in D.C. jail request transfer to Guantanamo Bay. I mean, I hear it's lovely there this time. I want to go to the gift shop myself. They did just get by, hit by a hurricane, uh, so I don't know, but... Uh... I mean, Cuba, lovely country. Mm -hmm. Even the shitty part where we uh, house our, uh, you know, inmates extrajudicially. Lovely place. They got a McDonald's. Uh, They got a subway. To to be in jail there, though, I would imagine it's pretty humid. Yeah, I don't, they probably don't let them out too much either. So, probably not the best place. D.C., much more temperate. Yeah, well, these these inmates, it's funny because they are correct. It's just funny to hear this from... That side, because they're mm-hmm. like, the conditions in this jail are fucking awful. It's I'd, like, I'd rather go yes. to Guantanamo. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, the, the conditions in most American jails are fucking awful because we treat uh, the criminal justice system as like punishment every step of the way. Yes. We want everyone involved to be miserable even before they've been found guilty. Mm-hmm. Um, but then they also, in their long list of grievances, they're like, and on top of all that, 
On top of finding like maggots in my food and uh, not having my clothes washed properly and just the general filth of this place, they're trying to make us indoctrinated into critical race theory. <gasps> what? Yeah. They don't expand on what exactly they mean by that, but um, it's pretty serious. That's when you know they're they're for real. So it's, just send me to, to get my. I don't care anymore. It's because they saw like a uh, you know like a black security guard or something. Yeah, like oh, prison guard. Critical race theory. Oh jeez. You're supposed to be in here, and I'm supposed to be out there. The world's gone completely upside down. Mm -hmm. That's how they think. So yeah, probably true. Yeah. Texas high school golf team cancels practice after encountering strip clubs tournament on course. <laughs> All right, guys, let's go home. Uh, the students are like, yeah, oh. I I'll think, go to the driving range for I a think bit. I left my pitching wedge back on the last hole. I got to go get it. So. <laughs> I oh, left my balls I'll on the catch, green. I'll catch up with you. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I guess uh, some local strip club, they they had the they had their own golf tournament. At a local a fun course. company. I don't know what that entailed. Like, I don't think it was, I don't think there was like nudity or anything, but uh, I think they had the girls come out and um, the, you know. They were showing some skin. I'm, I'm sure the guys were loving it. Still pretty hot. My, out, two, so, yeah. my two favorite things, golf and strip club in the same place. Yeah. And I get to show all the other dudes that I'm the alpha by getting <laughs> the lowest score. <laughs> yeah. Well. Then maybe, finally, my favorite girl will actually leave the club with me. Winner gets a lap dance at Shabooms. <laughs> California school cancels football season after players slave auction video surfaces. And it sounds like so the the, the crazier part about this is that uh, so many of the football players were involved that they had to actually cancel yeah, they, the season. They didn't have a team anymore. They couldn't build a team around what was left. Uh, those that weren't involved. Yeah. So this seems it's all very weird. It looks like the black students were like in on the joke. Which I mean, I, look, if, if they're all if they're all having fun, I understand why. But they also it's like if you're like one of three black people on an entire all white team, you're just gonna be like, yeah, that's hilarious. Will you guys like me more if I participate in this? I, it's totally fine. I'm yeah, I'm cool. It doesn't bother me. Yeah. Please be my friend. I don't know. The vibes are all fucked. And um, but yeah, it seems like some something like this happens uh, every couple weeks. Yeah, it, kids are stupid. They are. Yeah, they are. Like, I mean, I'm not going to pretend. These students aren't I, hopeless. Not they're just stupid. I'm not going to pretend my sense of humor as a teenager wasn't yeah. like wildly Horrible. offensive. Yeah. It's just uh, I didn't have a fucking phone in, in my pocket. That Don't make your mistakes publicly online. Yeah. Learn from them in private. Yeah. Yeah. It's just hard because they. Can... But it happened and it's like yeah. we can't not do something about this. Uh, of course. Like, yeah. This is extremely racist. To anyone outside of your little group of friends, what you did was extremely fucked up. Yeah. And we can't not address it. So Look, if this was Alabama, no one... sure, we'd sweep it under the rug. If this was Alabama, sure. The local, yeah, the, the, the community would. They would uh, understand. They would understand. Yeah. But uh, yeah, no more football. Well, I guess they'll learn. Really sucks for the people who weren't involved, though. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'd say so. A disgruntled tourist smashed two 2,000-year-old statues in the Vatican because he was denied a meeting with Pope Francis. Oh, yeah? How about that? Uh, yeah, he was really upset. I bet he wanted to talk to him about Pope Francis making Catholicism too woke. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Not the real Pope. Mm -mm. I got the documentation right here that says you're not the real Pope. Yeah. The real Pope. Pope Hussein Francis. Yeah. Real Pope is uh, Roma Didulo, a woman in Canada mm -hmm. who's not only the Pope, she's also the Queen of Canada. Yeah. So uh, get the hell out of my Vatican. Uh, she told me to stop paying my bills and my carbon monoxide sensor hasn't worked in months. And that's why I'm here. Smashing artifacts and begging to talk to the Pope. The Pope's got the, the craziest stands, that's for sure. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Have you seen the Pope Mobile? I mean, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, uh, this Pope, there was like, he seems like such a nice guy, but there was that one time he was saying, he was waving to all the people and everything's fine. And then someone like grabbed onto him. Yeah, like, and he was and like, get he, the fuck off he me, bitch. Pissed. He's like, what are you doing? Stop. Yeah. Wow. Normal Pope. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You love to see it. Yeah. Not I like do. that last Pope who was just very evil looking. Yeah. Didn't look like he wanted to be there. You know, you look at some people, you look at him, you're like, that guy, he looks like a villain. He did. He did. Probably not his fault, although. Didn't he come from, like, Argentina? No, this one's from Argentina. Okay. The last one was from Germany. Yeah. Or Austria, or mm -hmm. one of those German-speaking countries. 
Yeah. Anyways, not a good look. The vibes were incorrect. The fit was wrong. Yeah. And they needed a new pope. It's not like he died, right? They just like burnt the smoke. No, he retired. Yeah. He's just like, yeah, for the first time, it never happened before. He's like, you know what? I'm not really feeling this pope thing. I think he was pope less than 10 years. Just like, ah, all right. I thought I'd like this job, but not so much. Whole lot of just, uh, you know, people begging and stuff. Yeah, it's just these stands, they're out of control. Yeah. When I was just just one of many cardinals, bishops, that was fine. But my parishioners are developing a parasocial relationship <laughs> with, <laughs> with me as Pope. And I <laughs> not into that. No. Gotta really, have boundaries. N- not really into that. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, Pope Francis was was caught in a New York City nightclub with uh one of his parishioners. Pope Benedict, he you know he he was suffering from burnout. Yeah, that's true. He was poping for like two hundred hours a month. That's it's the thing. Too much poping. Was a lot of poping. Was a lot of poping. Yeah. Anyways, that's it for this week's episode of Weekly Weird News. Uh, if you haven't already, uh, Biden did not legalize it. But as we keep saying, he did take a step in the right direction when it comes to the uh, criminality of marijuana. Yeah, Dank Brandon. Yes, Dank Brandon. Uh, so check out our most recent video of uh, or news dump episode if you want to see more of that. And also the Elon saga continues to evolve. We'll have more for you on that soon. It's not like you're really missing it, are you? Yeah. No. We'll get to it. Uh, But if you do want that, we have that over there. So check out both of those episodes. Subscribe to the channel. If you want to, uh, you can click the join button. Click the thank button. Or the thank button. And also just leave a comment, leave a like, and we'll see you soon. To the 5,000. Bye.